So this will be Bravo 1. Here we go. This is going to be a loud one. Never gets old, that's for sure. That's going to make a good avalanche. It's a risky job, but they do it to keep you safe. The highway would be closed a lot if we didn't do this. Avalanche technicians at work in the Kootenai Mountain Range. This is one of the almost 50 avalanche paths in the area. But instead of letting nature call the shots, Oh, that's making an avalanche. Listen to that too, eh? They force the avalanche to come to them. Kootenay Pass 10, 7-1. What are you? Yeah, you'll probably need a couple of loaders for this. The six-member team uses state-of-the-art technology. It's called the Gazek system. The magic. 24 cannons installed permanently on the mountainside, detonated from a laptop a safe distance away. The system is efficient, accessible 24-7, no matter the weather. It's the largest program of its kind in Canada, and it's expanding. One of the projects that we have going on this summer is there's an avalanche area called 35 Mile, and it's, uh, uh, it's about 30 kilometres um, uh, west of Terrace, okay. B.C., and we're putting in a remote avalanche control system there. It's a very, very challenging place for our uh, avalanche crew. The ministry began investing in highway avalanche control in the 90s after a string of fatalities. In 1974, a cafe west of Terrace got hit by a natural avalanche, killing seven people. And in 76, three people were swept away in a convertible driving on this very road. While they use the cannons 95% of the time, they still need to use helicopters. Attacking areas from the air, the cannons can't reach. The explosives are made on site. They'll need 36 for today's heli bombing mission. Did you ever think you'd be building bombs? <laughs> probably not. Probably neither did my mom. Doing this crucial work means closing the road and delays for drivers. How long have you been waiting here for? Three and a half hours, about. <laughs> It's been a long time. The team needs to move fast. The highway closures are stressful. We know we are under a lot of pressure to get the highway back open as soon as possible. And as the cleanup crew moves in, <laughs> the team waits for the sun to warm up the other side of the mountain. More blasting needs to be done. The trick is it's about timing. So it's not about racing against the time, but it's about um, hitting it at the right time. If they blast too early, they will fail to trigger an avalanche. If they wait too long, the snow will come roaring down on its own. Then hey. it sounds like we're going to be open in the next uh, 15 to 20 minutes. So, After four hours, the highway reopens. Before firing cannons and dropping heli bombs, other work needs to be done. No precip. Identifying the avalanche threat means eyeballing the snowpack. It's the first bit of real warm spring weather, so yeah, we, we're definitely expecting avalanches today. First up, a snow profile. I'm going to start by digging my walls. Straighten these out. I'm interested in the upper snowpack today. I'm not worried about my deeper layers. I just want to see what's in the top 100 centimeters. Avalanches happen when massive slabs of snow break loose. See, uh, we could have a potentially dangerous lair coming up for our next snowfall. Next, he checks to see how much pressure the snow can take before it breaks. Potential weak lair. Um, the cold temperatures have uh, squared off the edges of the snow, so then it's a bit weaker. Invaluable information that technicians need to ensure the safety of one of North America's most dangerous highways. Part of the problem, Highway 3 was built on the south side where it catches the sun and it runs through an avalanche path. Well, the highway was built, you know, in the 1950s, so uh, the avalanche problem wasn't really widely recognized. We didn't have a professional association in Canada at the time. There was no National Research Council on avalanches. Um, and all the construction up at the Kootenay Pass happened in the summer months. So they didn't work up here in the winter. Keeping this highway clear is a 24-7 operation. Fatigue is an issue. 
um, safety of our staff is paramount and we can't have staff who are making critical decisions on people's safety or, or risk management being sleep deprived. That's why there are bedrooms, cafeterias, and each technician is limited to a 12-hour shift. Okay, thanks, man. And in the middle of one of their busiest months, there is no slowing down when you're a warrior in battle against a mountain of snow. Okay, thanks a lot for the day, Josh. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. From the Kootenai Pass, Tina Lovegreen for CBC News.